on faith. You need faith. You need to also grasp salvation. If you're not in love with the gospel, if you're not in love with Christ, then what are you doing as a minister? Have you got so bogged down in reading theology books that you've lost the joy of your salvation? Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. 1 Thessalonians 5, 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and of the helmet, for the helmet and helmet, here it is, the hope, the hope of salvation. Have a good grasp of the gospel, for that will give you strength. Then you need the armor of the word of God. You need to hide the word of God in your heart. Psalm 119, verse 11. Oh, this is a wonderful, 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 wonderful. Psalm 119, verse 11. Are you feeling your privilege, brother? Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not. The word of God is flawless, Proverbs 30, verse 5. The word of God is God breathed, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16. Jesus is God's word, Revelation 19, 13. The word of God brings salvation, Romans 10, 8, 9. And Romans chapter 10, verse 8 and 9. The word of God will never, ever pass away, Matthew 24, verse 35. The word of God is to be obeyed, James 1.22, and the word of God achieves its purpose, Isaiah 55, verse 11. Let's read it. Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I pleased, and it shall prosper the thing wherein I sent it. My friend, but as you proclaim it, even if men reject it, it will prosper. Then we're to pray. Then we're to pray in the Spirit. No matter how complete, says Albert Barnes, the armor, no matter how skilled we may be in the science of war, no matter how courageous we may be, we may be certain that without prayer we shall be defeated. I'll read that again. No matter how complete the armor, no matter how skilled we may be in the science of war, no matter how courageous we may be, we may be certain that what without prayer we shall be defeated. We need to be praying for each other. 1 Thessalonians 5.25 1 Thessalonians 5, 25. Yeah? 1 Thessalonians 5, 25. Brethren, pray for us. Brethren, pray for us. We need to pray in crisis. Acts 4, 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness that they may speak thy word. So they're praying in a crisis. They're praying as the gospel is being stopped. They pray against that. So we need to pray. We need to be wrestling in prayer. Mm, so we come to the end now. What have we talked about in this last part? We talked about the fight, not to underestimate the battle, not to be intimidated by the enemies of God, to realize that we need the armor of God, and it's so important. And we need that peace of God in Ephesians 6, 14.
Ephesians 6 14 Ephesians 6 14 Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And then verse 15, and your feet shed with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We need to walk in peace to know that God gives us peace. That God isn't going to leave us or forsake us. And as we have peace, we will be able to stand in the midst of the storm. One writer said, no battle of any importance can be won without enthusiasm. Napoleon Bonaparte said, victory belongs to the most persevering. Winston Churchill said, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Yeah. Reformed pastor or preacher or whoever you are today, if you're in the ministry or if you are doing ministry, whatever that is, I've given you some things to think about and I hope it's challenged and encouraged you. Now go forward in your ministry and listen to these words by John Wesley and then we'll close in prayer he says I want to know one thing the way to heaven and how to lay land safe on that happy shore God himself was condescend to teach the way At this very end he came from heaven and he had written it down in a book or oh, give me that book John Wesley as a pastor as a preacher you've been given a book the Holy Bible you are not called to give your opinions you are not called to give your ideas you are not called to bow to secular culture you are not called to bow to the secularization of the church you are not called to bow to the enemies you are called to proclaim that word faithfully. You are called to proclaim all of the word, no matter how much the world might hate it. That is what you're called to do. That is what I would call a reformed pastor. A reformed pastor is a person, a man, who is faithful to the word of God, who is an ambassador of the word of God, he will not change the message because he is, but will proclaim the word of God faithfully the way God wants. So, preacher, be encouraged. You've been given a great task. Maybe you've been beaten up emotionally by your congregation or by your leadership team, and maybe you're in bits at the moment. Maybe you've fallen out of the ministry. Maybe you've fallen into sin and left the ministry. Maybe people have pushed you out of the ministry. Maybe you're going through a difficult time right now in the ministry. I hope this video has been a help to you. But one last thing. Preach the word. Preach it in season and out of season. That is what he called you to do. So get on with it. And let devils and men scream all they want against you. You're answerable to God. So proclaim it for his glory. And the need of all men and women, boys and girls, to come to know the living God. Thank you for listening and God bless you. I'm going to close in prayer now. And I think that will be my final bit today and um, I hope it's been a blessing to you.
I don't think I can do any more today. I'm quite tired now after after that. It was a preach. Let's come before the Lord. Oh God, we come before you today and we're mindful of our own failure, our own sin. We acknowledge in our own areas we have made mistakes and we have done things in the flesh and we have not And we confess that, Lord. We recognize, Lord, that ultimately you want intimacy with us. Without intimacy, we can do nothing. You want us to focus on you, not on the problems, but on you. You want us to draw close to you. You want us to bear fruit. You have given us the way to bear fruit. And you have called us to battle. You've not called us to walk timidly, but to walk boldly in the grace of God. And so God, we come before you today, realizing how desperate we are, mm -hmm. that we need all your resources. We are reminded that without your resources, we can do nothing. And so, Father, we pray in the coming days and weeks ahead as ministers of the gospel that you would give us the resources, that you would equip us, that you would prepare us for the next phase of our ministries together. That as brothers we would stand together, we would work together, we would support each other and sisters for, the, for those who are, are doing um youth work and things like that and other ministries but for all of us who are doing ministry in whatever way we pray that we would stand together and support each other to proclaim the word of God Father forgive us our failure and our sin forgive us our weaknesses forgive us our foolish ways so Father we thank you for this day and we thank you for your grace and love a person today who hears your word with your love may they know your peace and joy and strength now may they know your help in ministry bless their ministry strengthen them enrich them and encourage them and be with them in all that they do bless them Lord in your name and for your glory may many many thousands millions of people get saved in these coming weeks and months ahead May our ministries be used to spread the gospel. Help us, Lord, for we are weak and frail. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope that's a blessing. Um, I don't think I'll be doing any more uh, tonight. So um, I think I'm going to call it a day now. And uh, I hope that's been a blessing to you. And uh, thank you for listening. And God bless you. If you want to as a pastor to teach your people to preach or be in ministry then feel free to use this video or uh, mirror it on your site if you want to use it to help people to go forward in ministry so uh, thank you for listening and God bless you